Hello, it's Pearl here. Um, and I'm bringing you a little podcast today. Because I can't type. Um, well, I can, but it's really slow. And um, this podcast is actually about being authentic. So I thought it was a good idea to do this this morning uh, with my very slightly broken arm, very, very sore ligaments, um, wearing my glasses, and I've got no makeup on. And I've been up half the night because my delightful neighbours decided to pack up to go on the holiday through the night and keep the whole street awake. So this is me being real, being authentic. <laughs> and I'm really, really glad that I don't have to go and teach a class today because I think it'd be hard for me to go in and teach a Zumba class, whether it was a Zumba gold or a chair or, or anything. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to, to teach a different way. Um, you know, along the lines of my meditation and, and mindfulness classes. And this is a, a little lesson, a, 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 a chat, mainly for instructors, uh, particularly Zumba instructors and also yoga instructors. And it's kind of inspired because when I was in A&E, um, having come off my bike, nobody's fault, just a bizarre accident, um, I met another instructor, another Zumba instructor in the, in the A&E or the emergency room. And we were talking about classes and the difficulties we're having and, and, and things like that. And it was really interesting. And number one, I wanted to say, you know, if you haven't, if you don't know about Zumba Gold Chair, go and check it out because it's really a need. And it's, it's a great, you know, Zumba Gold, they always say, you know, you're one, you're one day away, you're one, you're one class away from teaching Zumba Gold because, you know, if you have an injury, Zumba Gold is a great thing to teach because you can, you can work around you know, the problems you have. I taught my Zumba Gold class yesterday with this and it was a really bad idea. So I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I think I think they had a good time, but I didn't. And um, I taught my chair class, and I, that may not have been a wise idea either, uh, but I, I do think they got quite a lot out of it because two reasons. And one was, you know, I really was very compassionate with them um, because I was talking about the difficulties I was having and, and really recognising you know, being able to talk to people about difficulties they had. And the one thing I said was, like, you know, socks. It's really hard to get socks on, you know, when you've got a slightly broken arm. And the guy said to me, oh, he says, why well, I don't wear socks. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to connect with your class on that level. And the other thing is, um, you know, I think they got a kick out of the fact that I was the broken one. You know, I was the one sitting there going, oh, this hurts. And um, it was, a, you know, the shoe was on the other foot or the sock or something. Anyway. So talking about authenticity, um, the things I really want to say is that I think as instructors, you know, whatever you're teaching, even if I'm teaching meditation, mindfulness, people ask you questions, um, or we're teaching and we often shy in trying to show how do we do something, what's the best way of doing it, how, you know, the great way of doing it things. And sometimes I think that gets a bit confused with the idea that somehow we were able to do it perfectly first time. Uh, particularly, you know, if I'm teaching meditation and mindfulness, I get a lot of questions about anger. And, you know, the way you, you get over being angry is you have to deal with it every time you get angry. You know, it's not like you stop being angry. You have to, but you learn ways of, of dealing with it and, and ways to stay out of situations that get you angry. And uh, I think, you know, when people see as instructive, very often they see you do something and they say, oh, you're so lucky, that's so easy, you got that so quickly, you know they don't necessarily see the hours and hours of practice that you've been doing or the, you know, I do mnemonics with my choreography sometimes um, or, you know, the the time it takes sometimes just to repeat a move over and over and over until you've got it. And um, so what I'd like to say to you in terms of being authentic as teachers is that we need to remember um, that we, although we want to show up and, and do our best job, we don't necessarily have to pretend to be perfect. In fact, I think my the best teachers I've ever had are the ones that are open up, up open about the difficulties they've had. Um, I met uh, Tanya Beardsley a couple of years ago, and what I loved was when she sat down and talked about how difficult it was for her to get her first Zumba class, and how she had to go knocking on the door again and again and again and again and again to get that first opportunity. And I think, especially if we're looking at somebody who's who's maybe doing what we think we want to do, or um, has the life we think we want or the career we think we want and we look at them we think oh that's, they're so lucky they're so they worked really hard for it you know and if we have to work hard it doesn't make us you know easier or harder it doesn't make us different or less of a person it's just 
you know, we're all on the same, we're all on a path to being the best of who we are. And you can see right now, I'm having a difficulty because I'm really tired. And I could cut and I could go back and I could do this again. So I've already done about three times. But I want you to see that, you know, this is me being authentic, being real. When I write, you know, I write something, usually I rewrite it, I rewrite it, I rewrite it. That's what we do. Um, when you see a film, you see a video, you see somebody doing something great, you know, maybe they did 30 takes, maybe they did 40 takes. You know, we, but we have to acknowledge our difficulties. Um, I love Susan Jeffers and her books, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And I love, um, she wrote about when she, unfortunately she passed away last year in 2012. And, um, you know, it's very sad, she, she died of, of cancer. And, but she talked, she was, she, she re had recovered from breast cancer in the past. And she said, you know, when she, when she found out and she, the way she handled it, she handled cancer beautifully. She was the model patient. She did everything right and um, had a great attitude, <clears throat> which is so important. And then she says, you know, but before she got married, she had this, you know, bad perm. And she couldn't stop. She was, she was hysterical with how bad it was. And she was going to be in all the wedding photos. And, and, and I think for me that that always humanizes the teacher and makes it, yeah, I can learn from you because you're human, because I understand that you have the same challenges, the same problems as me. And um, I, I learned a lot. I went to the London Conference a couple of years ago uh, for Zumba and I, an instructor came up to me, we were talking, and, and I said, I'm finding it so hard to learn how to samba. And he said, you know what, I come from a country where everybody sambas, everybody's good at it, everybody does it naturally. I found it so hard. And I had to go and I had to just go and work and, blah, 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 and do a month. And, and I was like, you know, I'm so glad he shared that story with me. And he didn't kind of go, oh, well, you'll get it. You'll get it. Blah, blah, blah. Because it's real. You know, when somebody has a, you know, some people's going to find something easy. Somebody's going to find it difficult. It's okay. It's about being human and being who we are. So the two things I want to add to this, because it's a bit long already, you know, and I really need to go and rest this arm. Because my neighbours didn't let me rest all night. So, the first thing is about being authentic and being the real you. Now, there's a couple of a couple of uh, articles on my website and things, and one is uh, how to leave the ego at the door. So I'll put a link to that on my blog. And the other one was the real you meditation, and it's very very good for getting in touch with with the real you, the person inside. And I just want to touch on the ego really quickly because those articles, you know, really go into detail. But we say, you know, leave the ego at the door, leave your problems at the door. You can't leave a broken arm at the door. It comes with you. Sometimes things come in the room with you. And it can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing. But it's it's real, it's honest, it's real. Um, and sometimes you have to say to your class, look guys, this is what's going on for me today and, and I apologise or, you know, because we're, we're human, we're real. You know, some, we're not perfect, we get broken, we have to cancel classes, we have to teach with, with the problems that we have sometimes. Um, last week it was the heat and I had to say to people guys we're gonna have to take it down we're gonna just because you know even if those people in that class can handle the heat really well I'm doing three classes a day so you know I have to to compensate for overheating and heat exhaustion and things as well so we have to honor ourselves and you know we are human beings and we need to look after ourselves too but the thing I was going to say about the ego is it was really good as well sorry let her um the sling you know, it's a really good example of something that's, that, that's a good analogy for an ego because it's something we put on to protect ourselves when we need it. And very often we develop our egos because we're in a situation, maybe around our parents, around our teenage friends at school we were at, if you're in a dance class, and we have to adopt mannerisms, style of behaviour, personality that gets us through that time. And uh, so when we say let go of the ego, it's like taking this off, you know, and the two things are one, we have to remember that it's separate from us, you know, letting go of that mannerism. It's not really us. It's not really who we are. That's just just something we picked up along the way. And the second thing is don't you, you can't let go of it until you're ready. You know, this is staying on for a while. And, um, you know, we have to to be in a safe place to let go of the ego. So if you want to let go of your ego, one of the best things you can do is create a safe space, create people who can love you as you are um, and the room to grow and change and not have to be the same not have to constantly do the same thing because it's very hard to let go of your ego if it's supporting you to be who you are right now sometimes it it's quite painful 
to move on to change. Okay. And the second thing, yes, very important about being authentic, is we have to be careful how we share our stories. This may be an incredibly bad idea, the way I'm doing this. I don't know. Um, it seems a good idea at the moment. I'm in a lot of pain and I've got painkillers and, you know, it seemed like a good idea. Um, when we share our stories about our difficulties, it's really, really important that we don't share our difficulties as this is the way to do it. You know, I wrote a book, um, again, I'll put a link on the, the blog, about my experience as a kidney donor. Um, and I'm really, really glad I did it, even though it was very difficult and I had a lot of problems with doing that because I've had so many amazing emails from people telling me how much it's helped them because um, it was real, you know, and I told a lot of the truth about my experiences. Which is not going to be the same as everybody's experience, but it's very different to the, you know, the corporate literature, which is, oh, it's going to be fine, and la la la, and it's all wonderful, blah blah, it's all wonderful, la la la. It's painful. You know, maybe you're going to do it and you're not going to be in pain. Maybe you're going to be like, you know, these women who give birth and they go, oh, no, no nothing hurt. It was fine. It was great. Hmm. <laughs> and the small, you know, whatever. Um, what was I saying? Okay, the next podcast is going to be so much better than this because I'm going to be awake. Um, I got one really, really horrible review for my book. And in it, the reviewer said something on the long lines of, this is terrible advice, you should never do this, la la la. I was like, but that's what I was saying. Because I was talking in the book, I was talking about taking uh, my brother's um, medication. It wasn't painkillers or anything serious, it was just like a, it was a laxative. It was a laxative, okay? Because of, of, of what happens when you take a lot of um, morphine-based painkillers. I really, I'm not on morphine-based painkillers. I'm just on paracetamol and ibuprofen for this. Um, but uh, anyway, <clears throat> the story I told in the book, and again, you know, this isn't coming across so clear. And so it is important that when we tell our stories to our classes and to people that we're honest, but that we're also careful that we say, you know, this is, this is, a, this is a story of what to do and this is a story of what not to do. Because in, in this example, the, the person who reviewed my book said, this is terrible, you should never do this. I said, yes, that's what I was saying. I was using my story as an example of what not to do, okay? And so for me, cycling, when, I, when, when this happened, what, what did I do? I was wearing a helmet, and I'm going to go around and say to everybody now, I'm so glad I was wearing a helmet, and it was, you know, it, it, it protected me. My head, I think, is okay. Um, this hurts a lot, and I'm going to wear much longer, thicker things when I cycle now. Um, you know, what did I do wrong? I, I probably shouldn't have taught that class the next morning. You know, apart from that, you know, I, I tried to do the right things. And so when we, we're doing examples of our, our stories, um, it's very important that we're clear with people. Um, <laughs> you know, that when we, the Dalai Lama, and I'll finish with this because I could just waffle along for a bit and I probably should kind of rest. The Dalai Lama talks a lot about anger. And I love the fact he talks about uh, one of his hobbies is uh, fixing, or used to be fixing watches and clocks. And he said, you know, he was trying to fix this really intricate mechanism and every so often he would just get so angry and he would hit, hit the clock. And he said, it didn't help, it didn't help. And that's a really great way where he's talking about as a, as a human being, he experiences anger and he acts a certain way and it's actually a really counterproductive way of acting. And, you know, somebody who's a great spiritual leader can use that example. Um, another really great book, I meant to bring up some books to show you, I'll put some links on the blog, it's fine. Great book called Cultivating the Mind of Blood, Cultivating the Mind of Love by Thich Nhat Hanh, who's also a Buddhist monk. And it's actually um, a really great book to read if you've got, if you're struggling in a, in a, a romantic relationship. And it's about how he, as a young Buddhist monk, fell in love with a Buddhist nun. And it's lovely lovely story very beautifully told beautifully beautifully written and it's lovely because it's a bit like I suppose it's a bit like an accident it's something that happened and he and he and he he fell in love and how did he deal with it how did you know what happened and it's not an example of how to uh, put yourself in this situation because it wasn't a good situation for him but he learned a lot from it 
and he became more compassionate I think from reading it um, as a result of it and what's amazing about that book is he could write it and help thousands even millions of people to to deal with their feelings um, about falling in love in romantic love with somebody so actually it's a very good book where there's a lot of examples of how to deal with something as well as how not to deal with something so you have to read that book with care as well um, because obviously his situation was very different to to you and I most people who are reading this I don't think I'm not sure how many of you are Buddhist monks or nuns but most of us reading that book would be able to take different lessons from it anyway I hope there's some really good resources for you about authenticity um, yeah do email me um, I'm at pearl at pearlescapes.co.uk I have a blog um, and lots of pages about um, escapes and, and things that can help you and I think I'm going to do a few more podcasts um, I might put makeup on next time um, anyway this should be on for at least a week I'm hoping to get a bit more rest and I'll hope to see you soon okay take care stay real okay bye